Let me ask you a question. What do you think of as watches that have taken to the skies? I think of the Cartier Santos being the earliest pilot's watch. I think of the World War II Fliegers like the IWCs and Stoas. And of course, the Speedmaster with its relationship to NASA. But sometimes it's hard to place the Navi timer within this group. See, Willie Breitling didn't even want to make this watch, but with the rise of post war commercial aviation, the Navi timer became a staple on the wrists of pilots. And I think I might have just found the best one. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. So we just sold out of our watch collaboration with Jack Mason and I'm really proud of the GMT that we made and it was also for a good cause. We managed to plant like a small forest with the money that we raised. So can't wait for you guys to receive your orders, start posting your wrist shots on Watch Crunch. If you're not on Crunch yet, what are you waiting for? The biggest complaint about the Navi timer and I can already hear you guys typing in the comments is that its dial is too busy. Yes, I agree, but it's busy for a reason. In fact, every number, every dash, it's there because of the immutable laws of mathematics. Now, you don't hear your airline pilots talking about how their instruments have too much information, right? Well, in the early 50s, Breitling figured out how to put those instruments right on the pilot's wrist. And to understand this watch, we have to kind of revisit the 12 inch slide rule. I didn't grow up with one, but I had to Wikipedia this. It was an indispensable tool used by engineers and mathematicians before the age of calculators. It was a quick way to do calculations. Now, Willie Breitling had the great idea of turning that straight slide rule into a circle and mounting it as the bezel on his watch, making this, in essence, the world's first smartwatch. Take that, Steve Jobs. He thought so highly of his idea that he patented it in the chronomat from which the Navi timer was derived. And when the AOPA or Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association caught wind of this fancy new wrist computer, they begged him to make a version dedicated for flight navigation. He resisted, but they persisted and the navigational timer or Navi timer was born in 1952. Initially, the Navi timer was only provided to AOPA members, but it became so popular that production was finally open to the public. And the watch at hand here is my favorite reference because it's a faithful recreation of one of the most iconic 806s in history. Why is that so great? Well, we love vintage watches because they just don't make them like they used to. But we hate vintage watches because they're finicky, hard to maintain, and sometimes hard to authenticate. Well, I present to you the best of both worlds. And when I say faithful, I mean down to the most minute details. Not only is the case the same 41 millimeter size with a jet black dial, some well tinted khaki color loom, they even took care to give this watch a traditional beaded bezel and a sweeping domed acrylic crystal, and a snap on case back without the flourishes of a modern watch. Yes, that limits this watch's water resistance to 30 meters, and the crystal is more prone to scratching, but those are small prices to pay for something that looks like it came out of a safety deposit box that hasn't been opened in half a century. The difference is that on this watch, the loom still shines bright, and the movement, which we will talk about next, is a serious piece of kit. First guys, do me a favor, drop a like for this video. If you want to hang out here some more, consider subscribing. Early Navi timers came with Valju and then Venus calibers, but the benefit of buying this watch, which was made in 2019, is that you get some serious modern engineering inside. So Breitling wasn't holding back here with the caliber B09, and why would they? Breitling is synonymous with the word chronograph. These were the guys that invented the modern two pusher layout. No big deal. The B09 is a derivative of their B01 movement with the date removed and made manually wound. And this not only allows the watch to stay under 13 millimeters thick, which is quite an achievement for a chronograph, especially with that big domed crystal, but it also carries a healthy 70 hours of power reserve, runs at four hertz, is cost certified, and boasts the two words that sends shivers down the back of movement stops, those being vertical clutch and column wheel. 
The latter gives you that crisp start and stop action without the jump of the chrono hand sometimes seen in camera operated movements. And the former allows for a smooth running and engagement of the chronograph function with minimal wear on the mechanism. Does this justify its $9,000 price tag? Okay, put your pitchforks down because you can still get a vintage 806 for half that. But vintage isn't for everyone. And when you combine in a limited edition all of this modern tech in a watch that looks like new old stock, I think you can justify it. You can tell that Breitling really took their time with this watch. In fact, the loom is hand applied for that authentic yet imperfect look. In 2022, Breitling also gave this treatment to their famous Cosmonaut Navi timers with the 24 hour dial. So there's that one if you want something a little less practical, but arguably even more interesting. Okay, so what are things that I don't like about this watch? There's not a lot. Due to the slide rule bezel, the hands had to be pushed inwards. And sometimes this is visually hard for me to get used to because you expect hands to extend to the edge. Next, many iconic Navi timers came with contrasting subdials in a reverse panda layout. And for many chronographs, that's the more desirable option. But after wearing this one for a while, I actually prefer the simpler format because the dial is already busy. I don't find myself wishing for like more stuff going on. Plus the slide rule bezel is a contrasting white border to the black dial and it has the added benefit of decreasing the visual size of the watch face. Now I was worried that I would have trouble pulling off this full size Navi timer on a six and a half inch wrist. And don't get me wrong, this is not a small watch, but it's big for a purpose. Like a Speedmaster is an instrument or a Panerai is a tool. Uh, surprisingly, the proportions do work, and I think a lot of that is thanks to downturned lugs that help the case to contour to the wrist. This case is also a masterclass of fit and finish. The top of the lugs are polished with the flanks nicely brushed, and just look at this impossibly thin yet uniform gap between the case and the bezel. This is what precision looks like. It's like a car with perfect panel gaps. See, I'm in the process of distilling my collection down to a few core iconic pieces, but maybe not like the references that everybody has. And I feel like with the addition of this Navi timer, I get one step closer to that goal. This watch, it's got the sauce. It would be akin to Rolex making a one-to-one -one recreation of the Paul Newman Daytona. And to wear a Navi timer, especially one that looks this old, you really feel that connection with commercial aviation history. And I'd honestly choose this one over those newer, shinier Breitlings. Nothing wrong with them, they're just not for me. But guys, what do you think about this 1959 recreation? I know I'm still kind of in the honeymoon phase, but do you agree that this might just be the best Brightly Navi timer ever made? Hit me up on the new Watch Crunch app. It's available on both iOS and Android, and join us on a free modern platform for talking watches. Until then, take care.